Hotel Woodshop. Uh, this is Mr. Sorensen coming to you live from the woodshop again. And today I've got a short little uh, demo for you about the seven steps to squaring a board. Now, seven steps is the traditional um, way that this is looked at. But really, there's, there's actually an eighth step that some people do, some people don't do. So what we're gonna do is look at the seven steps of squaring the board, but we'll look at the eighth step so you can see what it is. Many people prefer to do that eighth step as well. And we're gonna use a board right here that uh, looks like it's in pretty bad shape, right? If you look at this board, it's very weathered. Um, it's actually a split rail from a split rail fence. It's been around for perhaps 50 years out in the weather. Uh, but inside, underneath all that, is a really nice board. And uh, we're going to take a look at that and see if we can bring that nice board out and square it up and make it smooth, just like it would fit into a really, uh, really nice project. So why don't you come over to the machines with me and let's take a look at the seven steps, or maybe eight steps, to squaring a board. All right, so step number one is rough cutting a board to length using a radial arm saw, you could use a chop saw or a um, sliding compound miter saw. Oftentimes when you rough cut a board to its length, the board is 11 to 12 inches or wider. And those boards are very difficult to cut on a chop saw. So the preferred rough cutting saw is a radial arm saw because you can cut a board up to 15 inches wide. If you don't have a radial arm saw and you have a sliding compound miter saw, that works great. If you don't have that, you're going to have to try to make do with a, um, a chop saw. We happen to have a radial arm saw here. So we'll start by rough cutting our board to length. And rough cutting is very specific. Rough cutting means we're going to cut to our final length plus one inch. Whatever the necessary length of our piece is, we're going to add one inch to that. And that's what we're going to cut our piece at. All right, so our piece is cut about one inch longer than we really needed at this point, and you can kind of see some of the color showing up in the end of this gray, this uh, gray colored wood. So we'll see more of that as we keep cutting. That's step number one. Step number two, um, we're gonna take it to the joiner. As I go to join my board and start to flatten the sides, one of the first things I wanna do is check the joiner for squareness, and to do that, I need this tool called a tri-square. Um, if, these, if the fence is out of alignment and has a bevel to it, I'm never going to get this board square. So I'll start by checking to see if uh, the fence is square and I'll make some adjustments. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we don't need our tri-square anymore. The next thing, because this is a fairly small board, I want to make sure I've got either push sticks or a pusher board so that I have a way to keep my hands away from that joiner blade. I'll start with the pusher board. Uh, I'm going to choose a decent side. This is the best side, so I'll put that down. As you can see, there's still some of the rough wood showing. This step takes two, three, four, five, six, seven passes. It, there's no set number of passes that it's going to take. It could take quite a few to get this side perfectly flat. So I'll just continue to run the board across until the entire side is flat and smooth. All right, 
well, there is the, the face of this cedar board. And as you can see, the gray is gone, and it looks probably the color that it did 50 years ago when this fence was cut up and put into the yard next to mine. All right, so we have a face cut. So I'm going to stay here at the joiner. Step three is join the first edge using the joiner. I'm going to put this face up against the fence. Now I'm going to use a push stick to make sure I keep the board tight to the fence because that's what's going to now allow the second cut that I'm making to be at a right angle. So again, that doesn't cut a lot off. This is not a one cut um, pass. I'm going to have to make as many passes as I, as I need to get this whole surface smooth. Alright, I'm very close. I think I'll do one more pass. So beautiful wood underneath that gray 50-year-old weather. Um, and we're starting to see a square board take shape here. Step four. All right, step four is ripping the second edge parallel to the first edge using a table saw because that's what saw will make two edges parallel. However, before I make that cut, I need to stop and we need to go back and think about step eight, right? I talked about the fact that there's this extra step in the seven steps. So the eighth, this eighth step, actually it ends up being step five. That step is because when you cut with a table saw, the table saw often leaves a rough edge or it, a burn marks on the edge of your board. And some people prefer to go from the table saw over to the joiner and clean the edge up that they just cut rather than leaving the, the table saw marks on it. So that would be our extra step. If I'm going to do that, if I'm going to go to the joiner and take off a little bit of this edge I'm now going to cut, then I need to leave a little extra wood on there. If my final size is supposed to be two and three quarter, I can't cut it at two and three quarter here or else there will be nothing to remove over at the joiner. So if I want to use that extra step, and we will do that, we'll use our extra step, then I need to make this cut a little bit wider, and I need to know how much do I take off on my joiner. Our joiner takes off between about a sixteenth and one eighth. So I'm going to move this over to two and seven eighths, and then when I take an eighth off on the joiner, that'll put me right at two and three quarter. Now I'm ready to rip the second edge parallel to the first edge. I've got my guard over as far as I can, but this blade is up really high to cut the, uh, the thickness of this board, and so I'm going to have to, I can only put the guard over so far. That rips our second face parallel to our first face. We're really getting a lot of great color on here now, and I can really start to smell the cedar. Uh, even after 50 years of weathering out on a fence, the cedar smell is just like that as soon as I cut into it with the saw. Now we're going to take this piece back over to the joiner and we will remove the saw marks and the burn marks with the joiner. All right, we're back at our joiner. Here is the extra step. The extra step is step five. We'll call it step 4A, right? 
Some people choose to leave this out. Some people choose to do it. We're simply going to take the edge we just cut on the table saw. We're going to run it across the joiner, smooth that face out, and move on to step six. Or move on to step five. Just like that, our first face and our second face are now parallel to one another, which is really key in squaring a board. And they're um, cut with really nice joiner knives, so they're very flat. There's no uh, table saw marks or burn marks. So our next step, as you can see here, is our next step is to go and do the opposite face parallel to the first face. The first face we did on the joiner, remember, and we got it flat. Now we need to do the second face parallel to that first face. To do that, we're going to use a planer. All right, well, here I am at the planer. And this is going to be the hardest step of all of them because our board started off really, really unsquare and really rough. And so now, um, our last step here is going to be to take this through the planer, but the planer doesn't like to feed rough and unsquare material through. So we're just going to have to work on it and get it through. Eventually, we'll, we'll get it down to being square. So the first thing I'm going to do is check and find the widest spot on my board. The widest spot is two and three quarter. So that's what I'm going to set my planer for. Uh, I'm going to come over here to the hand wheel. I'm going to drop the planer down to two and three quarters. And then the planer, I'm ready to start sending it through. And it's going to, I'm probably going to have to use another stick to kind of help it go until I can get it flat enough that it will catch on the feed rollers and go through on its own. And I need to take almost a three quarters of an inch off. And at a sixteenth of an inch, that's 12 passes. So this, is a, this, this step to get it square is a long step. So pass number one, and you can see here that a tiny little bit, just a little tiny bit came off. So it's going to take a while, and I'm just going to have to go pass after pass after pass and slowly work this down. We take off roughly about a sixteenth to an eighth per pass, so it's going to take several passes. five of the six of the seven steps or really with the added joiner step we've gotten through six now we now have a board that's parallel on the two edges and parallel on the two faces it's at two inches thick and it's at two and three quarters of an inch wide which is what I want now I simply have to do my last of the seven steps cut it to length and I am finished so let's go over to the chop saw to do that all right so we're pretty close on our board. Step six and seven. Step six is to cut the first and the best end square to the edge using the chop saw. Step seven is come down to the final end, cut off the bad end, and cut it to final length on the chop saw as well. That's making one end parallel to the second end. So let's do that on the chop saw. The first cut is just simply going to uh, clean up the end, make sure it's square. 
So I cut off a bare minimum there. Now I'm going to turn it around. This piece is about 19 inches long. Make my second cut. And there's my square board. I've taken seven steps or eight if we want to add in that uh, second or third pass through the joiner and I've made a square board. Well here's the board that we started with. Uh, it looked pretty rough and pretty weathered. Here's the board we ended with. Pretty smooth, pretty square. Very hard to believe that uh, a board that rough can be made square again and clean again. It's also hard to imagine that the color can come back, right? Uh, a board that gray and weathered, you would imagine there's no saving the color, but underneath all that gray material is a beautiful colored board. Now we have a board that's perfectly square and ready to fit into our project. And we did it all in seven steps.